Charts, numbers, facts, figures, they're essential elements that we use to make our work routine. But is it possible that we're overlooking something that could lead to far greater success in this world of those rules and those guidelines? Absolutely. Author Carol Adrian answers yes in her book, The Purpose of Your Life. Now, I, I love the title of the book already. It sounds absolutely fascinating. Thank you for coming on in. Thank you. So, do most people follow the rigid rules of society every day? And how many, you know? Well, that's a good question. I, I do think that we are so um, prone to want to follow what somebody has told us, maybe early in life, what we can you know, hope to achieve, that we don't often question what our purpose is or what else we could be doing with our time here. Hmm. I know you have a four-part process that people can really follow to find their purpose because a lot of people are lost and really mm -hmm. don't know what that purpose is <laughs> or maybe have some kind of indication but are really held back. So right. how would a person start? Well, I always, you know, one of the best things to do is really notice what, how are you feeling. Now, we were talking just before, we, you know, that how we, you feel good right. going to work. You right. feel happy. That's a good sign. If you're not feeling good, joyful or connected or feel like your work has meaning then you need to ask yourself what am I really doing here so feelings are important and I also want to say too you know that uh, your purpose in life is not a job title and I think a lot of us start to think that we have to get the right job or the hot job or the thing that makes the most money and we go off down a road on another idea about money or about achievement or status and not about what we really really like to do. Okay, how does a person then get to that point? Well, like I say, they first notice what's happening and then they have to really uh, decide, you know, what is it that I enjoy and then begin to pay more attention to that. You really have to stop doing the things you don't like to do and start doing more of what you like to do all the time, whether you get paid for it or not. Mm -hmm. Then as you start to go down that road of being more happy in your life, more and more people will show up. I believe that your your purpose is really inborn and that if you pay attention to the cues, your intuition, the inner voice. One of the reasons that I, I'm where I am today is I, I paid attention to an intuition I had to change my name. And that started everything in my life. Believe it or not. Change your name. I, I changed my name. That's a long story. But <laughs> I kept paying attention. And each time I would get an in intuition, uh, you know, sort of an inner voice telling me I needed to go back to school, I did that. I followed through. So we have to listen to our intuition and then notice what comes into our arena of life and I, I think and what's also important up. is you listen to the not only listen to your own internal cues but listen to the cues of people around you people are constantly saying you know you make a right. great this right. or you really should exactly. take a look at that I mean because that's I heard that a good portion of my life like Scott you're really wasting your talents here you should be doing this or doing that if enough people tell you that maybe you should start to think exactly. that that's maybe look the way you should what go. you wanted to be as a child I often ask people that in my seminars what did you want to be as a child what was so what do you get interested in now? I mean, is it medical news when you read the newspaper? What are you drawn to do? And I think another thing that's really important is always look for the purpose for whatever's happening in your life. What is the deeper meaning? I was on the plane coming out here, and I met a woman, and she told me this great story that she and her husband both lost their jobs the same week. Mm. And they, we, they were in the medical field, so it was kind of specialized, and they had no clue as to what they were going to do next. And within about two months, they, they realized that getting laid off was the best thing that had ever happened really? to them. Their retirement was better. They had more time to visit their family. Mm -hmm. She even remodeled her kitchen. Everything changed, and it was so much better. And at the beginning, it looked horrible. It looked like nothing was going to happen. I think the problem really is that people don't follow their intuition or maybe feel something in that intuition but say, I'm not going to go after that. Just common right. sense tells right. them to stay where they are. Well, that's part of my title of my book is The Uncommon Sense. Sometimes I have a story in there about a man who... Uh, his father early in life when he was a teenager told him he said son if you're not born with a silver spoon in your mouth you're gonna to have to work every day of your life and you're gonna to have to work for someone else mm -hmm. and so he said you know I took that in and he said I knew right then I was never gonna be an artist or a writer and he's very talented in that it took him 25 years before he woke up he was a big manager in a company and finally looked around and he looked at the guys who were like 25 years down the road and he said no way do I want this? Right. these are the winners and, the, and I he said they look like they've been run over by cars. So he got out of right. just following the road. There are definitely viewers out there who are saying, oh, it's easy for, the, her, for her to say right. she doesn't have two kids and mortgage. And, you know, how do I just change gears? I just can't quit my job tomorrow. I have an obligation and family to support. Mm -hmm. What do you mm -hmm. tell those people? Well, I also had two children. When I've lived my life this way, I had two children. I had to make my own way. I've, I was a secretary, administrative assistant for years. And I always had something on the side that I was involved in. I was always learning and growing. 
So I'm not suggesting that people, the only way to do is to quit your job and, and go to Nepal or something. But you begin to notice, what could I do now? Is this job fulfilling me? Is this the thing I want to do? Maybe you take, you know, you do something else on the side. I, I think, you know, sometimes we have creative aspects that we want to develop and we need a day job. So that's fine. Right. You don't have to quit your job. And, but begin to ask the question, is this the thing that I'm most suited for? Is this really what I love? And every day, in fact, one of my favorite stories in the book is a woman who had something else that she wanted to do, but she had a job that she hated. Mm -hmm. And she finally realized that somehow or other, the job, the career that she wanted to develop wasn't happening. So she turned toward the job she hated. She decided to give it her best. And I love that advice because she said, you know, Carol, I decided to turn toward my job and really be there. And within three weeks, again, because of her energy shift, her internal attitude changed, everything shifted at her work. She got a better job upstairs. She tripled her income, got a company car, and she really liked the people she was working with. Nice going. Oh. So when you shift your attitude toward what you're doing right now, you don't have to to literally leave. Although yeah. leaving and going to Nepal sounds pretty nice. That sounds yeah. good too. You <laughs> should do that too. Carol, thank you so much. The book again is called The Purpose of Your Life. And stay right there. We'll be right back in just two minutes. And Scott, I know you have the weather forecast and that question of the day. Absolutely. I'm getting nervous.